Hello, so here's five things you should do straight away with your brand new Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard. Um, starting off with this. Um, this keyboard is powered off at the moment, but if I turn the, it on, as it powers up, you will see that alongside the Yamaha logo in the loading up stream, uh, screen, and it's showing you what the model number is, will come a little message displayed down here that is my name. Uh, it's not actually my name. Um, and you can change that. So it just personalizes your keyboard a little bit. And the way to do it is to go into the menu button just here and then find your way to menu number two, which you can access either by pressing menu two there or by pressing the menu button again. You see the way it toggles between them just there and go to utility. And within utility, on the left hand side, you've got uh, system just here. And within system, as long as you are on page one of two and not page two of two, you will see this owner name. And of course you can put any name in there as I've done, but that's how you change your name. You just type it in there and press okay. And then it's saved in there. For the next time you turn the keyboard on, uh, it will come up just as you've seen with your name on the keyboard home screen. So just quite a nice way of personalizing it there for you. Number two is a touchscreen calibration. Um, this operating system, of course, is a touchscreen system. So it's very important that everything lines up correctly um, where you're pressing the screen um, compared to where the actual control is within the touchscreen itself. So this is how you do it. Um, again, we go to the menu button just here and we go back into menu two and utility. And what we have is, uh, where is it? Where is it? Touchscreen display on the left-hand side here. If you go there, and again, make sure you're on um, page one of two and not two of two just here, you can go up and change, uh, uh, load this rather, touchscreen, sound, uh, don't worry about the sound just now, but this button here that says calibration, press that, and it will direct you to do this, to touch the precise center of each mark shown in the display. So go ahead and do this, it doesn't take long. One cross there, then it appears in that corner, then the top right corner, and then, then the bottom right corner, and then precisely in the center. And that's it, that's all it takes. And so you might find that this just puts everything in the right place and doesn't you don't have any incidents where you're pressing slightly to the side of the box um, and it's loading it up or you're pressing a certain area of a box and it's not quite loading it up as it should do. So a touchscreen calibration only takes a few seconds, but you just know you've got everything sorted from that point onwards. The third thing is the home page shortcuts. Um, and these are, as you can see, if we go back to the home page, along the bottom. Um, great thing about having a touch screen is you don't require the um, corresponding buttons around the screen that we used to have on models like the Tyros keyboard from Yamaha and the old PSR series. But you can change these. Um, it doesn't have to be shortcuts to things like chord looper or to the split and fingering section, very useful as they are. You can actually change what's being displayed here um, to suit how you use the keyboard. The way to do that is to either go into this button here that says assignable, but of course this might not be present on the home page of your keyboard, but it will be present within the menu section. And for this one, we need to go to page menu one and go to assignable just here. And along the top, it gives us our home shortcuts. And these correspond currently, the writing in green just here, to our home page shortcut display. To change it, what you do is you press the one you want to change. And I'm gonna change the voice part setup uh, to something else. In fact, what I'm gonna change it to is the rather useful um, chord tutor just here. Um, if you didn't know about this, this is a really, really useful little thing that we've got on these keyboards. Chord tutor, that's all I have to do. Press it so it goes green and then press close. If I go back to the home page now, what we'll see is on the bottom left hand side, we've now got chord tutor. And again, you can customize these to display any of those parameters that you've seen in there. And there's almost any sub menu you can think of is within there and available for you to put there. But chord tutor, there it is. Load that up and I can see how do you play an E augmented with a seventh and a flat 13th and it'll tell you how to do that um, 
God knows why you'd ever want to play a chord like that, but there you are. It's a really useful, even for simple chords, like a C seventh. It'll show you how to play it on the keyboard and also show how it displays on a stave. So this next one is really useful and uh, it will save a lot of head scratching in future. It's how to make a blank registration. Why would you want to make a blank registration, I hear you ask? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, you might well be used to seeing the blue buttons on the top of the keyboard, the registration memory buttons, all lit up in blue. This is because at present there are things loaded into them. And in this case, if I go into the registration bank section, I can see that I've got my big band swing pack loaded in. And each one of these buttons, if I go back to the home page, will give me a different set of voices and tempos and styles, all suitable for big bands there. But I might have got to the point where I think, I want to make my own registration now, thank you. But what I don't want is all of those big blue buttons there. How do I get rid of them all and then start afresh? Now, rather than having to turn the keyboard on and back off again while holding down the far right hand note, or indeed having to go through and manually uh, delete the um, registration um, registrations themselves, what I like to do is make a registration that's called blank. Now, watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to press blank on the screen. Keep your eyes on these blue buttons. Book. There you go. They've all gone off. See? Load it back up again. They all go blue because things are loaded in them. If I load up my blank registration, watch. Book. There they go. They've all gone. So question is, how do you make a blank registration to start with? Well, I'm going to do it, but this time I'm, I'm going to call it blank two, just for example's sake. And I'm going to load up this registration again, but it could be any registration, remember, but any that have got things loaded into them. And what you do is you go up to the menu button just here, and then you go to register bank edit. And what we're going to do is delete all of these. So I'm going to start selecting them like this and then press delete. And it say yes to that. That will get rid of button one. Um, in fact, I can do it all in one go. Look, so I'm selecting them all, pressing delete. And as I do that and say yes to all, these blue buttons will disappear. There we go. So they've all gone from there. And all the blue buttons are now blank. But we have not saved it yet. To do that, we've got to press this save button just here. OK. But then it'll prompt you. It'll say, hang on, something's changed. Do you definitely want to save this? And I do, and I want to save it here, but I don't want to call it Big Band Swing Pack and override my Big Band Swing Pack. I want to delete that name. And a little tip for you, put a dash before the start because that will make it appear on the first page. And I'm going to call this in the capitals blank space two and press OK. And when we go back now, there we go. There we've got it. So we've got blank. Um, blank two in this case, but that little dash was important because that makes it appear not halfway through the menu where you get all your B's because they're alphabetical, but it appears on the first page, B for blank with a little dash there. You might also notice that I've got a symbol here that remains from my Big Bang Swing Pack. Uh, quite hard to say, isn't it? Big Band Swing Pack. If I go um, to choose my blank number two again, this time go up to File, and then rename, I've got the opportunity to, yes, it's that one I want to rename, go to icon on the bottom left. And here you can change the little image that appears. And I quite like to use one of the big bold colors here, just because it's easy to see. Press OK, and there it is, so blank two. So really useful there to always, always have a blank registration at the ready because it means you can then start afresh when you're making a new registration. Okay, the next one is to make use of the favorites tab within styles and voices. Why? Because when you're new to this keyboard, you're going to discover, um, as you'll see here, if we, um, if we go into our voices here, you're going to discover that you've got hundreds of voices, hundreds of them, and you'll play some and you'll think, oh, that's my favorite. I want to keep that one. No, that's my favorite. I want to keep that one. Oh, no, I've discovered this new one. How do I keep that one? But the reason I'm telling you this is because it's very easy to lose track of where they are. 
because there are these sub-menus, look, page one, page two, page three, page four. This is just the brass section. This goes on to page seven, page eight. How on earth do we remember where all of our favorites are? Let us say that this one called um, Techno Brass was my favorite. I might forget that it's all the way there on subsection P8 of the, of the voice category under brass. So hold down Techno Brass, here we go, holding it down. See that little yellow bar that appeared? I'll just reverse it, it's gone. Now that yellow bar will come back, watch. There it is. Now what that's gonna do is duplicate it into my favorites tab, which is um, represented by this little star just here. Press that, there we are. I see techno brass. So no matter where I am, I could be in strings, guitars, bass, percussion, drums, wherever. As long as I go up to the star category just here, it's always gonna show that one that I held down with that little yellow bar up here. And again, if I wanna get rid of it because I don't want to play techno brass anymore. It's not one of my favorites. You can hold it down and it disappears. Go back in. Let's say that cocktail piano was my favorite. Hold it down, yellow bar appears. It's duplicated into there, you see? Now this does work on styles as well. So if I'm in the style category and let's say the entertainer, um, pub piano is my favorite. Hold it down, yellow bar appears. And again, duplicate duplicates into there, into the star section, your favorite section. It's a really good way of making sure you know where your favorite ones are, favorite voices and styles as you're discovering the keyboard. That favorites tab's really handy. Okay, just a final one here. Okay, it's number six, and this was only supposed to be five, but I like this one. I really wanted to share it with you. Um, alongside the preset voices you've got on this keyboard, you've actually got a whole set hundreds more of them that are kind of half hidden away in a special section called Legacy um, because they came from older models of Yamaha keyboard and they were used on many of the styles and some MIDI tracks as well. But they're a bit tricky to find. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. So this will in effect give you hundreds more voices to choose from. Now let me show you what I mean about why it's hidden away. If we go into the main voice category just here, here we are, and we go to our presets. So you'll be very familiar with this. We've got all our categories down here on the left and we switch between them like that. And each time we show the first page of each category and we know that we can go to page three, page three, page three, etc. But did you notice this little arrow here on the bottom right hand side? What's that all about? Well, watch what happens when I press it. We go back, it's a little bit like the back button on an internet browser. And in this case, it's brought us to this page where we're just being shown folders that correspond to these categories here. But on page two, there's an additional one called Legacy. Within here, you will find hidden away a whole new set of categories, um, some quite familiar like piano, but these have voices and um, voices on there from previous models of keyboards. Percussion, there's a whole load on there that aren't on the main category. There's loads and loads of extra synths as well, if you like those sorts of things, all hidden away there in the legacy category. Um, the pads as well in there. And each time, look, I'm pressing this up arrow to return one page, choir. We've got all the old choirs as seen on the old PSR and the Tyros keyboards are in there. Um, all of these will have something new. Um, to you, new to you, not new voices, but they're not displayed in the regular categories. You have to go into this legacy section first, which again, you can get to by going to the regular voice section, going to the arrow on the bottom right, pressing that once, go to page two, and there we are, legacy. So there you go, hundreds more voices for you to play with on your keyboard. So that was five, ended up being six um, things you should do straight away with your new Yamaha PSR SX. 900 keyboard. If this video has been useful to you, do us a favor and press the thumbs up icon below the video. It really helps an independent store like us get seen online. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. All the best. Bye.